How would you like to be able to raise private money? I'm talking about right at $1 million of private money in a short one-hour luncheon. Well, that's exactly what I did. I raised $969,000 at just one private lender luncheon. Well, my guest in this episode is a very good friend of mine who's raised $3.5 million of private money herself. My guest is Crystal Baker, and in this episode, we are reversing the roles. That's right. Crystal is actually going to be interviewing me as to how exactly you two can get a lot of private money very quickly and very easily. So if you want private money for your deals, stay tuned to the very end of this show. Let's get started right now. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Well, I'm super excited because I have the unique opportunity to actually get to interview you, Jay. And so thank you for having me. And um, I hope that we can share some really great information with all of your guests. The question we were asked is, because I there's word out there that you raised 969000 at one time. How did you do that? Well, you know, Crystal, and of course, you very well know because you've raised millions in private money yourself for your real estate business, like myself. There's so many ways to attract private money. Of course, one way we don't do it is trying to pitch somebody uh, on a deal. In fact, I've never pitched a deal right in my life. So what do we do? We put on our teacher hat, right? And we teach people. So how did I raise $969,000? It was at a private money luncheon, a private money luncheon. And what in the world is a private money luncheon? Well, a private money luncheon is where you invite people to this luncheon. You have a set menu. They're not offering, they're not, you know, ordering off the menu and all that. And the purpose of having them there is to teach them about private money, private lending, and to uh, teach them a little bit about self-directed IRAs and how they can use their retirement accounts to uh, also be a private lender. So the event is just wonderful. I mean, what a great way to leverage your time. Takes the same amount of time to teach one person about private money and how it works and what your private, you know, lending program is and that type of thing Um, versus, you know, having maybe 20 people that you're teaching. So it's a great way to leverage your time, raise a lot of private money very, very quickly and have it in like a very, very fun uh, environment. Awesome. And, and, you know, it's really interesting because um, one of the questions that we were given, and so I would want to touch base about this is they were asking us, well, you know, is it only lunch? So you'd mentioned a fun environment. Um, and so I would want to share that we've actually had through the teaching of all of your students, the opportunity for them to have events of different kinds. So it's not only lunch, right? You can do some other Yeah. Things. I mean, you know, when I started out years ago, um, I mean, I, I started using private money all the way back to 2009, 2003 to 2009, I was using the local banks, but the world of private money is like changed and transformed my real estate investing business in 2009. And since then got 44 private lenders now funding our deals. But, you know, I had in my mind for a few years that it was a luncheon to do it. Well, you know, some of the students that uh, you and I coach um, started saying, well, hey, can't we do this event at, you know, different times or different venues or different places? And so, wow, our students came up with some just amazing ideas and they've been so successful at it. Some of them, you know, um, have an evening, like, you know, get off of work on the way home. Uh, They'll, you know, they'll have like a reception, have some, you know, finger food, et cetera. Um, We've had some other ones actually host uh, the event in the evening after people get off work at an actual house that they have just 
finished renovating. And so they'll have, you know, pick up snacks and et cetera, and drinks right there at the house. So, um, you know, it, it just isn't limited, you know, to a luncheon. Um, I don't think I've heard of anybody doing it at breakfast, though. I haven't heard that. But uh, have you heard of any other venues or, or type of places that they have had it? So, you know, it's interesting you bring that up. We've had people that have leveraged and it's about the relationship you have with your potential private lenders. So know your audience. So we've had people, like you said, do happy hours. We've had people do them at breweries, restaurants, um, catered at uh, the fellowship hall at the church. We've had people that have um, used uh, buildings that are part of the HOA. So like a community building, we've had people that brought it into their own home and have done like desserts. So there are a plethora of different places that you could do something like this. It's just really, in my personal opinion, it's about knowing your audience and where they would feel the most comfortable and it would build the most confidence. Yeah. Well, and you make a good point there. I mean, you want it fun, you want it relaxed and, um, and that's the best environment to have. I mean, and of course, you know, birds of the same feather flock together. Some of the people there that you have are going to know other people, right? Uh, it's not like they're going to be walking into a cold environment. Um, I mean, after all, you know, if you have some private lenders already, you want to have two or three of those private lenders at your event. And there's a good chance those private lenders are going to know each other, right? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. And and so you want to make it an inviting environment as well. Like you just said, birds of a feather flock together. So you want them to have the opportunity to interact with each other. So Absolutely. What is that, yeah. So what does that look like when they show up? What, um, what it, you said, you know, we like to have it kind of a fun environment. Do you just jump right in and start having um, doing your presentation? What what how does it look like in terms of setup? Yeah, well, we definitely want to have what I call a warm up period. Uh, you know, a meet and greet, you know, have some snacks that they can go ahead and, and, you know, start enjoying right away. So typically, you know, we'll spend the first um, 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so of just people arriving. You know, um, you always have, you know, one or two or three that's not right there, you know, at the, at the top of the hour when you begin it, particularly if you're going to be having the event, you know, at the end of the day. And so, you know, a little warm up, you know, shake hands, you know, and when you are uh, hosting a private lender event, well, you need to have on your host hat. And what does a host do? The job of the host is to make everyone feel welcome, make everyone, you know, feel comfortable. So obviously you as the host, you're going to be welcoming people as they come in and you want to be introducing people to other people so that they can be starting conversations with each other during that networking period right up front. Absolutely. Um, and I think you just, you know, you made a key point. Oftentimes I find that people forget that that is your responsibility, that you want to warm up the audience with one another as well, doing those introductions, being there to, to meet and greet. So you don't want to be off ready to prepare to you know, present a PowerPoint or be off on your own when you should be really interacting with your guests. Absolutely. As I said, the job is to make them feel welcome, make them feel comfortable. So, so I, I just want to unpack just a touch and only for just a moment. We've talked about different types of places that you could have the event. What are your key recommendations about assuring that you've picked the right place for the event? Aside from like I commented, you know, knowing your audience. Well, you know, if you're going to have it at a restaurant, I don't really recommend um, having that in the in the back of a Denny's restaurant. Um, I'm probably not going to want to do it at um, and 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 I look, I love Denny's, right? <laughs> Nothing against Denny's, but I want to have it at a location, particularly if it's going to be a restaurant, at one of the nicer places that that you know I could afford to have the people, because you know you want to put your be best foot forward and you know, let them know that you are really trying to pr provide something of value. Obviously, the people you invite are not going to be, I mean, if, if, if it's at a restaurant and it's a luncheon, they're not going to be paying for their own food. You're going to, you know, as the host that's teaching people about private money and self-directed IRAs, you're going to be providing the meal. So 
you know, if it's at one of your houses that you have renovated and you want to show that off, what a great place, you know, to have your general contractor, you know, at that. But if it's going to be at a restaurant, put your best foot forward. Like for myself, when Carol Joy and I have a private lender luncheon, we have it over at the Dunes Club, which is right on the uh, ocean front. It's a private club. And so, you know, it gives that kind of exclusivity. However, you know, you may not be a member of, of a private club. Good chance maybe you aren't. Well, have it at a nice hotel, a nice, res a nice resort, the best setting that you can come up with. Absolutely. Um, and we do love the Dunes Club. It's lovely. But that being said, that does set a high precedent. But like you said, if it's a location where one, obviously it speaks to the best that you can, you know, the most that you can afford to do it, but also is a private location where you're not going to be interrupted a lot going on, or there's all that background um, noise or activity. So people can actually be engaged with you. Um, so You've mentioned a couple things uh, about people that you might want to invite. So I heard you say private, a, a current um, private lender, and I heard you mention contractors. So who should you invite to come to your private lender luncheon or event? Yeah, what I do is, you know, I want to have as much credibility. I want to have as much proof as I can at the event that, would these people would, you know, give me credibility? Well, who in the world would that be? Well, first of all, I want to show my attendees that, you know, I've got a real team put together. Well, who's the team? Who's on the team? Well, my on my team is my realtor uh, that, you know, pulls all my comps for me, lists my houses for me, finds deals for me. So my realtor is going to be there. I'm also going to have my real estate attorney. Now, if your attorney doesn't give you enough credibility, then, well, you need to change your attorney. But my real estate attorney is going to be there. My uh, CPA is going to be there. Uh, and I may have some of my team members. You know, if you have an acquisitionist, you might want your acquisitionist there. Um, you know, general contractors, as I mentioned before, current private lenders, if you have any. And, uh, you know, just by having those people there, when I start the presentation, after everyone has assembled and, you know, we've had the warm up period, um, you know, for 20 minutes or so. One of the first things I'm going to do up front before I actually start teaching the private lending program, how people can earn high rates of return safely and securely, talking about self-directed IRAs. I'm going to introduce uh, my guests that are on my team. Well, I can assure you, if you have any current private lenders there after the event, your new potential private lenders that you have invited, they're going to want to talk, right, to your current private lenders. So having that team of, I call it your credibility team, that shows people that you really are in business and you're doing this thing is so important. I don't want to invite just potential private lenders. I want them to be able to interact with, um, you know, my team members. And here's the people that you want to, you know, back to being a host and having on your host hat. Here are the people that I want to introduce people to. As people are coming in, I want to have my team members right up there with me. In fact, I want to have my team members there maybe 10 minutes early before we've invited everybody else. So that my real estate attorney to my realtor, my CPA, general contractor, et cetera. And what a great way to start, you know, that warm up period by introducing your potential private lenders that you've invited there to your team members. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, you make such a good point. And I really appreciate your sharing that with everyone. You, you, you have to build a credibility when you're in spaces, right? And people want to work with people that they know and trust. It's much easier to know and trust you when you're already showing them this whole team of people that work side by side with you. And, and especially, like you said, here's your attorney right there. So they know that you're not just some kind of fly by night person who's just off doing business in whatever way they, you know, willy nilly, whatever you want to do. You've got a, an actual attorney right there that's showing, hey, this guy's legit. He does, you know, he does a decent, solid business. So that's awesome. And and so we were asked a really great question by um, one of the um, individuals that attends your platform as part of your platform for teaching. And they said, well, how does someone that has no experience 
come off as credible? How do they show competence? So what would you recommend they do if they don't already have a history of investing? Yeah, so there's a couple of ways. Both ways is what I call leveraging a relationship, right? So if someone's brand new, and you're right, Crystal, we get this question all the time. Who in the world is going to loan me money if I've never done a deal before? Well, first of all, let me give you that the answer to that. And then we'll talk about, uh, back to your question, Crystal. So here is what I call a writer downer. The reason someone will loan you money um, and you've never done a deal before is because if you as the borrower does not pay them, the property pays them. Now, what in the world do I mean by that? Well, you see, we don't borrow unsecured funds. Now we can, nothing wrong with it. It's legal, but that's not the way we do business with our private lenders. When we borrow funds for our deals, we collateralize. Here's what we call collateralizing the note, which means the private lender, the individual, of course, to make sure you understand what we're talking about here, this is all about doing business with human beings, individuals, other people. This is nothing about institutional money or hard money. This is not about hard money lending. This is all doing business with individuals. So, when you're doing business with them, we want to back their note with the real estate that we're buying. So how do you leverage a relationship? Well, if you're working with someone, say like myself, and you know we are in business together, whatever, then you can leverage our relationship. You know, you can say, my, somebody says, well, how many deals have you done? Well, you can honestly answer that question. Well, myself and my business partner, Jay Connor, or whoever it is, we've rehabbed or he's rehabbed over 450 houses, right? If you're doing, um, you can joint venture with someone right there in your local area. And what I mean by that is, you know, one thing you should be a member of is your local RIA, your real estate investing association, get involved in your local real estate investing association, volunteer, right? Well, when you are networking with people at your local RIA and you learn that someone has been, you know, doing deals, well, you can offer to joint venture with them by saying, you know what? I know how to raise private money. Would you um, mind us joint venturing on a deal? And what I can bring to the table is the money and the funding. In fact, Crystal, uh, you know, we have a student uh, and his wife, Eric and Erica, they just bought an apartment complex on a joint venture because they had learned from us how to raise private money. So leveraging your relationship with someone else, if you're new, that is uh, experienced, is a great way to have immediate credibility just by talking about them being your business partner. Yeah, absolutely. And so I want to point out a couple of key things that you said. And one is that we collateralize these notes, right? So you're not just borrowing private money and saying, you know, sure, we'll 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 get it back to you. You're actually giving them an equity cushion by collateralizing it to the property. So that is one key thing and certainly differentiates the way that you teach the program vice a lot of other people that are out there that are working in private money. And so that gives you a lot of credibility from the very get go. And then on top of that, like you said, you can leverage these relationships. So when you are working with someone like yourself, when we're when you have coaching students, they have that that right to say, hey, I'm in partnership with you so they can. And I tell them when I'm working that um, one on one coaching them, I explain to them that, you know, they have the great opportunity since they work with you that they do have that relationship. They can call us at a moment's notice. They can ask you for help. So it isn't like they're out on their own and that that that's not true. So it's really leveraging that relationship. You're right, Crystal. I tell you, Crystal, uh, I know, you know, but um someone listening may not know. I'm so excited about this private money guide that I recently finished uh, writing and I want to give it away for free. And this private money guide will put you on the fast track to getting funding for your deals and never miss out on a deal. Uh, just like I haven't and like Crystal hasn't for, you know, a long, long time. And the name of this guide, you can download it for free the name of this private money guide is seven reasons why private money 
will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. This will get you started on the fast track for getting private money and funding for your deals. And listen, if you've never raised private money or you have raised some, you want to get this private money guide. You can download it for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's all one word, money guide. Again, that's www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. And you know, Krista, we've been working together for a number of years just for the fun of it. Share with our listener, how much private money have you raised? <laughs> <laughs> I have a little over $3 million in private money at this time. Yeah. And are you having the same trouble I am? And that is you got more money available to you than you can use. Yes. In fact, <laughs> I think you and I have had this conversation that during all the events of the last couple of years, it's really skyrocketed, even in comparison to before. We have people seeking us out. Yeah. And you know, and, and the deal is, as you and I have talked about time and time again, you know, none of this is chasing, none of this is begging, none of this is selling. It's all about putting your teacher hat on. What do I mean by that, Krista, when I say put your teacher hat on? So you have really crafted a unique approach, and that is you're teaching people how they can invest their funds at very high rates of return, safely and securely, typically tax-free. I may have practiced that a time or two, not for this podcast, but for an introduction. Um, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is that all of the materials are teaching materials. So it's looking for that opportunity to truly teach somebody what options are available to them that they don't previously know most of the general public has no idea that this is a possibility. And so until you or someone that you've taught teaches them, they will not know. So rather than going to someone and saying, Hey, I've got this deal or I need this money. It has nothing to do with that. You're just showing them a possibility, teaching them about what's available that they would never know. And then they have the opportunity to opt in and say, Oh my goodness, that would be, that's something that looks like it would be good for me because who couldn't benefit from, investing their funds and making that kind of money. Exactly. And you know, someone may be asking the question to themselves, well, how do I learn what to teach them at this event? What is the private lending program? Well, again, by downloading the private money guide that I just uh, told you all about, um, that will get you started. So, you know, we have like a 20 point checklist teaching people what the program is. We do this at the events um, and you would want to use it as well if you're just visiting one-on-one um, -on -one with someone or you're at a networking event. But, you know, what interest rate, you know, do we pay? And by the way, that's another big thing right there, isn't it, Crystal? I mean, we get to make the rules. We get to make the rules in this world of private money. The private lender is not setting the interest rate. They're not setting the term. It's like 180 degrees. In Kentucky, they call it a 360. You went too far if you went 360. <laughs> it's a 180 degree turn from borrowing money from the banks because when you borrow money from the banks or hard money lenders or brokers, they're making the rules. They're setting the interest rate. They're setting what's the maximum loan to value. But in this world of private money, we as the borrower teaching other people, we set the whole program, right? We even have a way for them to get their money back in case of an emergency prior to the term come and do. So, you know, it took me a little bit of time to get that whole concept wrapped around my head. I mean, we never bring any of our own money to the closing table. It's like, it's all really private money is all a no down payment uh, transaction, meaning it's not of our own money that we are bringing to the table to, you know, purchase the property. The private money lender is funding all of it. And Crystal, don't we always bring home a big check when we buy? How does that work? I was, and it was funny you were saying that because that's exactly what was running through my mind at that moment is we always borrow more than we need for the transaction. And the reason we do that is not because we just want to borrow all this excess money and it's not such a good idea or that we're leveraging the client. We're just still staying within the parameters that protect the client, but it makes sure that we have money to get our rehab done, to pay for carrying costs and whatever else you might need to do with it. So you're leveraging the property and the equity in the property to borrow more and actually get that money that's excess cash to close. 
I love it. Back to you, Chris. So you're the one with questions today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I want to say one thing. I love that you share the private money guide and that it's free to people because one of the things that I love about you is you're always about giving back. So make sure that everybody is watching. I just want to share with them. Please make sure that you take advantage of that because that's really what Jay's about. He's just, he has a servant's heart. He's giving back. So I love that you're doing that for them. Um, so I wanted to ask you um, at least one more question. I'm not sure how much more time we have, spoke, but one more key question I want to kind of dig down in that we were asked, and that was, well, what in the world happens after this private lender event? So you you know that you got there, you opened it up, you had some interaction, you got them all warmed up, and then we know that you presented your private lending program to them. But what happens when it's over? Well, here's a writer downer. Have you ever heard me say the money is in the follow up? <laughs> the money's in the follow up. So what happens after the event? Well, first of all, this is all about positioning. So these people that were invited or are invited to your event, you're asking them for their help. That's up front. You're asking them for their help as far as, hey, I need you to help me have a successful event by attending. And, you know, Crystal, have you not heard more than once our student will have uh, have an event planned. The student will call up uh, and invite people and they'll say, well, I'm really not interested in that. And, you know, I don't want to eat your food for free. And, you know, I've heard I've heard at least one student say, well, hey, I know you're not interested. That's fine. But I need your help. I need you to show up. So this is successful. And they do. Don't they, Crystal? They do. Well, people want to help other people and you teach this. And there's actually a study out there that was done that says people who help other people actually like those people more. So if you're not asking them to do something complicated, you're feeding these people. That's not complicated. You're giving back. So absolutely. People will show up. And then amazingly enough, turns out once they hear the information, they're interested. Right, Jay? Exactly. I, I mean, I've heard, you know, I've heard students um, say this time and time again. I'm thinking of one in particular that, you know, she actually said, look, I need your help. I need you to come anyway. And she ended up being, you know, a private lender, uh, you know, after the event. So what happens after the event? Well, I'm, we're going to call them up. And we're going to thank them for attending the event. Thank them for, you know, helping you out by coming to the private money event. Ask for their feedback. As far as, well, can you give me some advice on how I could have made the event better, right? And, you know, I'm thinking of, of one particular um, student of ours, Crystal, that says when they do the follow-up, they don't even ask them if they're interested. The attendee is automatically going to tell you if they're interested or not after you've thanked them for coming and asked them for their feedback, right, Crystal? Absolutely, because this is a great opportunity for them. So if they already have that warm connection, you're not making them come find you. You're reaching out and saying, hi, you know, how did it go? What do you think? This opens the door for them to just share where it is that they are. Oh, my goodness. I'm really interested in that. How do I get involved? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, the private money event, great way to leverage your time. I've raised you know, almost a million dollars in private money just doing one of these events. And so I just can't encourage you enough to have your own private money event, just like Crystal, just like myself, just like, you know, our other students have all across the nation. And again, how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to get started by downloading the private money guide at jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide, and they'll get you started. Crystal, how fun has this been for somebody else to ask me questions and let's meet and instead of me doing all the interviewing? Thank you for joining me, Crystal. My pleasure. Thank you for letting me pick your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there you have it, my friend. Thank you for uh, tuning in and joining us here on Raising Private Money. And guess what? I need your help. Yes, I need your help. So how can you help me? Well, first of all, I really appreciate you liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, if you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and click that bell so you don't miss out on any notifications of upcoming Raising Private Money podcast. And in addition to liking and sharing and subscribing, how else can you help me? 
Think of one person, a family member, a friend that you believe, a fellow real estate investor that could really uh, take advantage and have value in listening uh, to this episode. Share this episode and I will appreciate you so much. So that wraps up another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level. And we'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconnor.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.